All right, let's go. Are you ready? So, you want to be a social media manager in 2021. I do social media management as my full-time business. We're gonna get into exactly how you do that. You can find me at ASAP Studios, um, underscore ASAP Studios. A little bit on my personal journey to becoming a social media manager. In college, I did work part-time at a local startup in Austin, Texas. It was an intern and I learned how to do a bunch of different marketing. I did their social media for a little bit for them and that's where I fell in love with what social media can do for businesses and I learned so, so much. So the number one thing is going to be to educate yourself. There's a lot more that goes into social media management than posting like a pretty pic, a nice feed, even though that's a really fun part of the job, there's so much more that goes into it than that. And you have to understand how to get your future clients results, track the results, see how many followers are converting into clients. You have to learn how to do that and how to be effective at that. There's so many resources out there where you can educate yourself. You do not have to have a college degree, although I did. The University of Texas, when I was in college, I did know that I was going to go into some sort of entrepreneurial journey. I always knew this, so I made sure to take marketing classes as well as accounting so that I had some sort of grasp on what was going on the financial side. In addition to whatever sort of educational background you already have, what you're going to need more specifically the behind the scenes on social media management. HubSpot Academy has some great resources for this. Facebook Business has some great courses on this and a lot of them are free, which is great. And I will link any courses that I've taken listed below using Skillshare, Coursera. I also just signed up for Creative Live classes, which only had one that I saw specific to social media with Jasmine Starr, but it is a great class. I would highly recommend recommend it. Again, I will link all of this below. Within the world of social media management, it is an ever-changing world. You have to stay up to date with Instagram and the updates that they're coming out with like every other week. I do that is I subscribe to a bunch of different newsletters. Um, I subscribe, of course, to Instagram. The Instagram's newsletter, Instagram's business newsletter that is one way to stay up to date on what Instagram is doing. There's a bunch of different blogs out there, like the Social Media Examiner, for example. It doesn't have the best aesthetic. They are super helpful on what they post, and they post so frequently. I take my 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes in the morning to look through the top news articles in there. You have to have a portfolio of some kind. A, you can work for fake clients. You can then create a project for that client that is fake and then put it into your portfolio as an example of work that you can do. You can also work for free or for um, a heavily discounted rate for like friends and family. A lot of people do not advise working for free. I think whenever you're first starting out and if you do choose to work for free, which again is a great way to build up your portfolio, you gotta put a time limit on it. You can't just say, yeah, I will be so happy to work for you for free, indefinitely. You have to say, I'm gonna work for you for free for this one project that ends at this X date. I will work for free for a month or so to test out my services, see if you like me, and then if they do and wanna continue with you, bam, you've got a new client. You need to market yourself. Talk freely about your services, and of course you should probably be on a lot of social media channels, or just pick one or two that are the social media channels, such as Instagram or Facebook, that you are focusing on growing for your clients. Um, if you grow Pinterest, you should have a Pinterest. Don't worry about how many followers you have, doesn't matter. They will come as long as you're putting out valuable content. Except the important thing is that you have your Instagram brand kind of built up on there and that you just you have a presence. Don't get stuck up on the details when you're first starting because believe me, they will always change. One other thing in regards to just appearing professional, make sure that your LinkedIn profile is updated. The current uh, profile picture, you have a list of you know your services and the name, if you have a name of your company or your business, or just say, hey, I'm a social media manager in your bio. Whatever it is, just be present on LinkedIn in some form. Having a website, because this is gonna be the main way that people are going to be able to contact you or to view your portfolio. If you have a website nowadays, it's really simple. You can do it on Squarespace. I personally started mine off on Wix. I think now I wish that I would have started off on Squarespace just because I like certain features that they have better. However, Wix is a great option. I found that it was cheaper than Squarespace and I was trying to do things as cheaply as possible. It does not have to be complicated and it does not have to be long. All you need from your first website, for your website, you just need an about page, list of your services or at least what you do and you need a way to contact you. 
those three things, that's it. You don't need any fancy sales funnel or marketing strategy yet because that'll come later. You need to have an order of operations. What do you do when you get a client? You have to have a solidly locked down order of operations to know what you're gonna do when you get those clients because they will come. This involves what your contract is, invoicing. What invoicing service are you going to be using? A lot of websites such as Squarespace and Wix, they offer some sort of invoicing service. You have to research, so like what are the salaries for social media managers in your area? Or what do they charge per hour? Or anything like that, you need to research the market that you're in so that you can get a good idea of how to price your services. Are you going to charge per hour, kind of similar to a lot of freelancers do? Or are you going to charge per package? Or how are you going to structure those packages? These are a lot of the questions that you have to figure out and you have to have to know before you start actually receiving clients. What I personally do is not charge by the hour. I do include additional hours in my higher up packages, billable hours, um, but I did create specific packages based off of client needs and then how I charge people on those packages is I request a deposit when I start the work, 50% deposit and then 50% after the month's completion. What scheduling platform are you going to be using? I personally use Later and I love it. You'll be able to automatically schedule the post way ahead of time so you can batch create. You need analytics so that you can report back to your clients and show your progress. You can easily save in captions, collaborate with clients and get their approval beforehand to make sure that you're good to go with posting. How to actually get your first client. I'll make a video later on that goes more in depth on how I got my first clients. But the number one way is to ask friends and family. So asking family and friends is how I really started off my business. I started advertising on my personal Instagram saying, hey, I do social media management. Then I made a business Instagram, ASAP Studios. I had a friend's mom reach out to me who wanted me to do social media management for her. I started doing that for her. She really liked my stuff. I also did website design for her at the time, which I did not offer anymore. She referred me to a home builder that was helping her remodel her house. And then I started doing their Instagram. And then the home builder referred me to realtors and other home builders, et cetera, et cetera. And that is how I grew from word of mouth. Fun fact, still have both of my first clients to this day working for me, which is so cool. Another tip that I did to get clients when I had no portfolio and um, no previous clients is I actually went around Austin, got local Austin magazines, stuff like that, and looked up their email addresses and numbers in the magazines and I cold called them or cold emailed them and came with a script. I just cold called and it was brutal. I did get one client from that. So I think it was worth it. Okay. And the last thing to remember is to focus on your real life leads, family and friends, and talk about it all the time. Talk about random people that you meet. You never know who's a new social media manager, which is kind of everyone these days. Thank you so much for watching my video. Subscribe to my channel to get more videos like this on social media management, life, freelance, entrepreneurship, everything.